It's a great day to worship God together. Welcome to online worship at Mayville United Methodist Church. My name is Steve Delano, and we're so glad that you've chosen to worship with us on this, the fifth Sunday after the Epiphany. Our sermon series on the Book of Romans continues today. We will explore how the Apostle Paul used, utilizes one of the most significant Old Testament figures Abraham to demonstrate true faithfulness to God and what this means for us. Our hymn of praise today is All Creatures of Our God and King. This hymn was written by St. Francis of Assisi in the year 1225. According to hymnary.org, St. Francis is universally known for preaching to the birds and urging them to praise God. But his whole life was of service to God and humanity. He was the son of a wealthy cloth merchant. Francis led a carefree, adventurous life as a youth, but after an illness and a pilgrimage to Rome in 1205, he voluntarily began a traveling life of poverty. He restored rundown chapels and shrines, preached and helped the poor and the lepers. Other young men joined him, and Francis founded the order named after him. The Franciscans were approved by the Pope in the year 1210. Legends about Francis abound, and various stories, prayers, and visions are attributed to him. Let us sing.
Do you know what a promise is? A promise is something that you say you will do or not do. It is a commitment we make to ourselves or to others. It might be as simple as a parent asking their child to promise to clean their room. If the child answers, I promise to clean my room today, then the child has promised and committed to doing it today. Do you know of any promises that God has made? Do you remember the story of Noah's Ark? God was angry with all of the people of the world because their thoughts were wicked and evil. So he sent 40 days and 40 nights of rain to flood the earth and kill every living thing. God had instructed Noah to build the ark and save two of every animal on the earth. When the flood was over, God promised that he would never again destroy every living creature. This week, in our study of the letter of Romans, we will hear of another promise that God has made. God promises a man named Abraham that he will be the father of a multitude. That means that many, many people will come from Abraham, children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and so on. Abraham was probably a bit doubtful that he could be a father of many since he was already 75 years old when God made this promise to him. But God kept his promise with Abraham, and he did become the father of a multitude. Our God is a loving and gracious God. God keeps the promises that he makes with us. Parents often promise their children that they will love them and take care of them. God does this too. God loves us and promises to take care of us no matter what. Please pray with me. Dear God, we thank you for the promises that you made to Noah and to Abraham. We thank you for the promises that you make to love and care for us. In the name of Jesus, amen. Please join me in an attitude of prayer. Gracious and loving God, we are grateful for the prophets of the Old Testament and the disciples of the New Testament. We are grateful for the Apostle Paul, who spread the good news of Jesus Christ throughout the world. Fill our hearts with rejoicing as the words are proclaimed in song and story from your holy word. Merciful and forgiving God, we confess our fear, our doubt, our lack of trust. We confess that we are sinful. We come asking for your forgiveness, for your mercy. Guide us, cleanse us, help us to be all that you want us to be. Healing and comforting God, we ask for your healing and comfort for all of our friends and loved ones that are ill or hurting. We ask for your compassion and uplifting presence for all in our community that are in need. We ask for your patience, strength, and peace as we continue to live through the pandemic. We ask for your guiding hand so that we might love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Almighty God, we celebrate your never-ending grace and your steadfast love. We celebrate that you have revealed your love for us through the gift of your Son. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Romans chapter 4, verses 1 through 5 and 13 through 17. What then shall we say was gained by Abraham, our forefather, according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him as righteousness. Now, to the one who works, his wages are not counted as a gift, but as his due. And to the one who does not work, but believes in him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted as righteousness. For the promise to Abraham and his offspring that he would be heir of the world did not come through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, there is no transgression. That is why it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his offspring, not only to the adherent of the law, but also to the one who shares the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations, in the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. In today's scripture message, Paul focuses on Abraham and his relationship with God. Do you remember who Abraham was? You might recall that Abraham was the founding figure in, of Judaism and that he was the first person chosen by God for a role in God's plan of redemption. The story of Abraham can be found in the Old Testament in Genesis chapters 12 through 25. Here are a few highlights from Abraham's story. Abraham was originally named Abram. The name Abram means the father of the exalted. His name was later changed to Abraham when God initiated his covenant with him. The name Abraham means father of a multitude. God promised Abraham that he would be the father of many. When God made this promise to Abraham, he and his wife Sarah were very old. She was barren and well past childbearing age. However, Abraham believed in God and trusted that God would fulfill his promise. Years later, Abraham and Sarah became impatient. So they decided that Abraham and Hagar, that would be Sarah's handmaid or servant, that Abraham and Hagar should have a child. His son Ishmael was born to Hagar in 2080 BC. This was not God's plan. As God's promise for Abraham was with Sarah to make of you a great nation. As God promised, Sarah did eventually bear Abraham a son named Isaac. Abraham was 100 years old when Isaac was born. Then when Isaac was around 15 years old, God tested Abraham. God told Abraham to take his son up on a mountain and sacrifice him as a burnt offering. Abraham trusted God and did as he was told. When Abraham was on top of the mountain with Isaac bound up to be sacrificed and Abraham was ready to kill his son, God stopped him as he had proven his obedience to God. 
it seems apparent that the people of the Church of Rome knew who Abraham was, God's most faithful servant. They most likely had heard much about him as they learned of Israel's history from the scriptures of the Hebrew Bible, what we call the Old Testament, and many other non-biblical stories. Therefore, Paul appeared to be at ease in discussing Abraham in this letter. Why is Abraham so important that the Apostle Paul included him in his letter to the Romans? Paul's intention was to ensure that those reading this letter knew that Abraham was not only the patriarch of the Jews, but also their forefather. In today's opening verse, Paul says, What then shall we say that Abraham, our forefather, discovered in this matter? It's important to recognize that Abraham was the forefather of the Gentiles, and he had a very special relationship with God. Remember that God had called Abraham. God had selected Abraham to be a significant person in God's plan for mankind. In verse 4, Paul asks, For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. Paul was quoting from Genesis 15, verse 6. These words followed God's promise to Abraham that his descendants would be as many as the stars. In Romans chapter 4, verse 13, Paul emphasized the faith theme of, that God's covenant with Abraham was due to his faith and nothing else. It reads, For the promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Paul is reinforcing what we found last week in chapter 3, that God's covenant with the Jews, with the Gentiles, with all of mankind is not based on following the law and the Old Testament commandments, but God's covenant is with us through our faith. The reason he uses Abraham as his example is because the scriptures proclaim that Abraham was justified to God, made right with God by his faith. And this occurred long before Jews existed or the law existed. You see, Abraham was called the Hebrew this might be because he was a descendant of someone named Abair, or possibly because he crossed to the other side as he left Ur and crossed the Euphrates River in 2091 BC. The Israelites were descendants of Abraham through his son Isaac and grandson Jacob. God changed Jacob's name to Israel after God wrestled with Jacob as Jacob was preparing to meet his older brother Esau sometime near 1900 BC. Thus, the Israelites were Jacob's descendants. The term Jew was later used to describe the inhabitants of Judah, which were descendants of Jacob's son Judah. The point of sharing this chronology is that Abraham was right with God before the law existed, before Judaism existed. Thus, God's covenant with Abraham preceded the law. God's covenant with Abraham was based on Abraham's belief in God, his faith in God. The point is critical for Paul to make to the Romans. They were not restricted to the law, and they were heirs to Abraham and God's covenant with Abraham.
So how is this relevant to us today? How is this story of Abraham and God's covenant with him relevant to us 4,000 years after Abraham lived? The relevance is the same for us as it was for Paul's audience, the Romans, that God has been with us all along and God will not abandon us. God's covenant with Abraham was also a covenant with us, his descendants, just as God's new covenant with us through Jesus Christ, God giving his only son, Jesus, to walk the earth as a man, to die for our sins, and be raised for our redemption. God's covenant with Abraham's descendants and us as followers of Jesus is one of grace, righteousness, and faith. What is asked of us is simply to accept God's grace, to accept God's righteousness, and to demonstrate our acceptance through our faith in God, and to follow Jesus' example as our Lord and Savior, to love God and to love one another. Amen. Please join me in the Wesleyan Covenant Prayer as we orient our hearts to God. I am no longer my own, but yours. Put me to what you will, place me with whom you will. Put me to doing, put me to suffering. Let me be put to work for you or set aside for you, praised for you or criticized for you. Let me be full, let me be empty. Let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and fully surrender all things to your glory and service. And now, a wonderful and holy God, creator, redeemer, sustainer, you are mine and I am yours. So be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it also be made in heaven. Amen. for worshiping with us today. I encourage you to follow Jesus' example. I encourage you to care for others in whatever way that you can. Whether it's sharing your special moments, special memories for our 175th year celebration videos, or collecting items for the Mayville Food Pantry, 
or calling a congregant to chat. Whatever way is meaningful to you, as we graciously accept God's gift, let us also live into our faith with our love for God and others. Please receive the benediction. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Thank you.